Hi guys, in this video I want to cap off the exploratory design with some multivariate um, descriptive statistics that we can get and possibly graphs and uh, some more bivariates that perhaps I forgot in the previous videos to mention. Uh, so here, let's go. I got a little list over here of items that I want to get through in this video. So. Um, First off, let's say we're looking at our, well, first off, we are looking at our used car data set again. So I have it saved as DF1. Recall this data set. We converted transmission to a factor. I think we also converted mileage to a factor. Uh, I happen to uh, have re imported it this time and I haven't yet converted this to a factor. So I could go ahead and do that if I want, or I could just leave it as is. It's not really the focus of this particular tutorial. So let's start um, looking at some relationships between variables because uh, we've already looked at things univariately <coughs> and um, some, some bivariate uh, as, as well. So let's, uh, let's see if we can kind of look at something that's going to give us more than two variables, uh, the relationship between more than two variables at a time. And so there's this function called pairs, and this is going to create what's called a scatter plot matrix. So we've already seen a scatter plot, so this is a matrix of scatter plots. So the one uh, uh, caveat is you have to feed it um, only numeric variables. It can handle factors, it can handle characters. But uh, it's better uh, to just feed it numeric variables. For now, you could play with, uh, with transmission, for example, if you like. So what I'm going to do is I, wanna, I pretty much want to feed it, would love to just feed it the whole data frame. And it can interpret the whole data frame, which is this thing right here with all six features, um, except that we have one, two, character variables. So if I do this, I'll get an error message. And the error message, if you if you kind of, they're, they're kind of somewhat difficult to understand sometimes until you get used to it. It says non-numeric arguments to pairs. So it's talking about these guys especially. Okay, like I said, I think it can handle this. Okay, but it can handle those guys. So we need to, um, we don't want to necessarily state them one by one, so we can just use our kind of indexing notation. Remember rows, columns, rows, columns, right? So we want all rows, but we want to subtract a couple columns from this data set. So which columns? We did this in a previous video, so you could go back. If, if you haven't seen that video, we actually got rid of columns, got rid of rows, extracted different kind of, um, extracted data in different ways. And so this kind of expands on that. So here we don't want model which is the second feature right one two three four five we don't want the fifth we don't want color and we don't want transmission so use minus after the comma in the square brackets sorry here and this is we're telling it which columns to include from df1 okay and so in the, if we put minus we're saying which columns to exclude so we would want it to Exclude column two, column five, which is color, and column six, which is transmission. Okay, notice these are the parentheses for the pairs function. And within it, we have our data frame, and we've subset our data frame by using the square brackets. We left the rows empty, which means include all 150 observations, all 150 examples, all 150 rows, in other words. Comma, which columns to exclude? I include or exclude by using the minus sign, saying exclude two, four, uh, five, and six. Okay, now if we hit enter, it should be able to handle this. And it does. And we get a scatterplot matrix. You can resize it. It's nice to keep it nice and square, but resize it. 
and you'll see that this takes some kind of there's a lot of information loaded in here and you can believe it or not you can even load a lot more you can put colors and lines in here that summarize things but for now let's just focus on the most basic kind of default scatterplot matrix here so you see year price and mileage and so this, for example, this particular one is has a year on the y-axis, right? And price on the x-axis. So here we get to see how price and year are related. And we see that they have a somewhat positive, almost linear, almost linear, a little concave down relationship. Interesting. Next, we could look at this one. This is year here, right? So this everything this way has a year on the y-axis and mileage on the x-axis. So we see that my year and mileage have a somewhat negative linear relationship. You could argue linear, but definitely negative, right? Next, this one is pretty much a flip of this one, okay? So there is extra kind of ways to look at the same thing. So why is it? Because now year is on the x-axis, right? And price is on the y. This one, price was on the x, year was on the y. So you could see this is like this, and this is just the flip on the origin. Okay, It's a mirror image right? about the origin. So we don't need to analyze this again. And the same goes for this guy over here which is year and mileage we did that over here the other way okay so you can pretty much focus on one uh, half of the scatterplot matrix and slice it in half along the diagonal you could just focus on the scatterplots here because these are a mirror image looked at by flipping the axis okay and finally let's do the last uh, one here price and mileage seems like as mileage increases price decreases right and that's that's very that seems very linear to me okay so we get a lot of information about a lot of variables at once and how they relate to each other so that's a scatter plot matrix so let me minimize this and do something, show you something that's very closely related. So just hit the up arrow. We're going to use the same subset of data frame, except we're going to calculate what's called a correlation matrix. And if you recall, correlation was the measure of the, the strength and direction of linear association between two numerical variables. So I kept it to only numerical variables, same ones we talked about here. And this provides this kind of matrix, which is similar to that, the scatterplot matrix, except it's giving us the correlation coefficient. Okay, so correlation coefficient goes ranges from negative one to one. Okay, inclusive. So this diagonal is year 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 and year are perfectly correlated to each other. Price, price are perfectly correlated. Mileage, mileage. So this diagonal is nothing interesting. So, so don't look into that too much. What's interesting are, again, looking at the upper triangle here. Just like we looked at the upper triangle of scatter plots in the scatter plot matrix. Right? And you'll see that they corroborate. They tell the same story. as the um, scatter plots that we read here. So namely, year and price. We saw year and price had a positive relationship. Well, look at year and price here. Positive, pretty strong, right? How about mileage and year? Mileage goes up, year went down. I mean, I mean sorry, as year went up, mileage went down. Right? And that's what we notice. Right? Negative correlation. See that? And somewhat strong. Finally, as what happened as mileage increased to price. 
well as mileage increase price decreased and that's this guy right here so mileage price negative pretty strong okay so the scatter plot matrix with the correlation matrix together can start painting a kind of picture of how our numerical variables are correlated to each other or related to each other more generally okay so let me close this out um, you could rewind watch that over I want to show you how to use some other functions that we're going to summarize our data in, in, in basically a, a very succinct way so recall our data again okay we have these two categorical variables that we were interested in the previous video namely color and transmission and I showed you very quickly how to get the for example average price based on the uh, what color a certain car is or what, what transmission the car has and we use the t apply function to do that if you recall we were able to get the, the mean price for uh, automatic cars and the mean price for manual cars how about if I want to get more uh, kind of let, I want to I want to not only know the mean price for automatic cars but I want to know the mean price for automatic yellow cars the mean price for automatic gray cars the mean price for manual yellow cars and so on and I don't want to do this one by one I want to aggregate everything so there's this function called aggregate so first you're gonna feed it the numerical variable that you want to calculate something about okay and then we use the squiggly tilde I believe it's called and now let's say we want to just look at transmission so let's replicate basically what we did with the t apply function so transmission data frame df1 function mean yeah. object transmission is not found I spelled it wrong it's usually a spelling so here we get the same information we got using the t apply function in the previous video okay so t apply there we had to actually say um, df1 dollar sign df1 dollar sign transmission and then function equals me and you see these not this is how we did in the previous video which is fine and you get the same results a little bit I, get, I think it's a little nicer using aggregate okay but that's not really the power of aggregate aggregate we can actually now add another layer of information another categorical variable let's say color so I want to know the mean price for each level of transmission at each level of color so let's hit enter and see what it does and you see we get quite a, piece, uh, a lot of information here so line by line here and there are 16 lines because there's 16 combinations of colors and transmissions so we go transmission auto color black average price 13,561 transmission manual color black average price a little lower and so on and so on let's just jump transmission automatic color silver the average price of those cars was 13,784 interesting we can slice up the data we can get conditional statistics in this case the mean right because that's what I will ask for at levels of multiple categorical variables so I can say I want to know the average price of a manual car that's blue I can go manual blue do we have any manual blues if there isn't any you won't see we don't even have blue cars uh, manual green so I come here manual green boom 10,836 all right now let me just hit the up arrow and show you that it's not just the average or the mean that we can calculate but we can simply change this get the standard deviation and if you see NA it's because there wasn't either there wasn't any automatic gold cars or there wasn't enough automatic gold cars to calculate the standard deviation okay um, we can get uh, the length I believe length should give us 
how many, yes, how many cars were there that were automatic and black, manual and black, auto blue. If you recall, there was another way to do this. By the way, look, automatic gold, only one car. Okay? There was another way to do this, and this was the table function, right? So we did table, we did um, transmission. Sorry, DF1 transmission. If we just said it this way, it told us how many manuals, how many auto. If we did comma, then we did DF1. And we asked for, let's say, color, two categorical variables. Now we could see how many automatic black cars there were. 26. If we scroll up, 26 automatic black. Okay, so I would this would be the much more direct way to do it for two categorical variables. This aggregate function is much more powerful when you want to calculate the standard deviation and the mean or other statistics based on of a numerical variable based on conditioned levels of a of multiple categorical variables or just one. Okay? So let's let's uh, so we see this so actually this transitions us into our table here so this is in it right here that we're looking at that we created with the table function is a two-way cross tabulated table this we created together in the previous video is a one-way cross tabulated um, table because it's just one variable so we add another one and we get one of them goes on the x-axis of this table, one goes on the y-axis. Both of these, notice, are categorical. Okay, So I can see at any intersection, like for example, manual gray cars, there were only two. Manual blue cars, zero. Silver automatic cars, 28. Silver manual cars, 24. Total silver cars, 32. Right? I could, I could kind of see that that's obvious. Okay, so this is a two-way cross-tabulated table. Okay, and we can do something we did in the previous video. We got proportions, if you recall, by doing transmission, that by dividing by the length of transmission. So basically we divided these two numbers by 150 to get the proportions instead of just the raw numbers. Right? So we see that 128 automatic cars is actually 85% of our total data. 15% of our data was manual cars, which in numbers is 22. So a little bit more sophisticated to get this relative frequency table. Well, why don't we extend that idea to the two-way table? So here's our two-way table that we're working with. We're looking at two categorical variables, transmission and color. We got the frequencies, the raw counts. I want to know, instead of these numbers in here, I want to know proportions. So let's divide that by the length. And here's here you could choose either of these two guys, because their length is going to be, should be the same. Okay, When we have a table that has an equal number of observations for each uh, variable, the length of these two should be the same. So have your have your choice. Okay, and this it just dragged it onto the next line because my font is big. So we see that seventeen. Uh, okay, so black automatic cars represented seventeen point three percent of our data set, uh, whereas there were no gold manual cars, right? And we saw that there was zero gold manual cars, so it's zero percent. And let's see, there was a lot of red automatic cars. So here, 16 percent of the data was red automatic cars. Okay, so this is this is useful. If you don't like all these decimal places, we can also adjust that by using the round function. So you could look into that. So we can, I can quickly do this. So we can go home, round. Basically, I'm wrapping what we just did inside a round function, and I'm going to round to just one decimal place. There. Okay? 
So uh, some things I, I admitted the zoom through, and that's because you can pause and rewind and slow down the video, speed up the video, so you can watch it over. All right. And finally, what I want to talk about on this list I have is a side-by-side -side box plot. So this is great when you have um, when you want to determine the, uh, the relationship or learn about the relationship between a numerical variable and a categorical variable. Okay, so you can create these box plots. So we've done a box plot. Let's just remember how we made one. We made a box plot of price probably. And we made the most basic one. You see, it's got the box plot's got a lot of information. We talked about Q1, Q2, Q3, right? 1.5 interquartile range. Interquartile range is how wide this is right here. That's IQR. Right? It's a measure of spread. IQR, not IR. These are considered outliers by the algorithm that creates this, which means they're more than 1.5 of these away from the mean. Okay, uh, sorry, away from their closest quartile. All right, so how about if I can make a bunch of box plots side by side and for price? but split this one up basically into the different colors or transmissions. So to do this, let's use plot. So I want to make a plot price. I want to, my numerical variable I want to uh, uh, understand is price and I want to see how it relates to, let's start with transmission. Notice when I don't use the DF the name of the data frame dollar sign and then the variable price there's always this part of the function that requires me to tell the function which data frame these variables came from the reason why I'm switching this up is because sometimes you can do this and sometimes you have to do it this way okay so this is just like the learning curve just basically I'm not I'm not messing with you I'm not trying to make things difficult okay so data frame is df1 we hit just enter right here look at our plot we'll see that we get a two box plots of price because price now is split into the cars that have automatic transitions and the cars that have manual transmissions so we can compare these two box plots manual transmissions seem to be less variable than automatic transmissions sorry I should be more specific manual transmission cars tend to be less very their prices tend to be less variable than automatic cars prices all right and so on okay how about color so let's just put color here and it says blah 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 let's see what it, aha here is our problem let's go to str and here we learn a, a good lesson look at transmission factor Box plot handled it perfectly fine. Look at color. I didn't change it to a factor, so it got I got this error message. So sometimes, uh, if you know your variable is something you want to analyze further, and you know it's categorical, it might be a good idea to change it to a categorical variable. So let's quickly do that. So color, we did this in a previous video. Factor. And let's factor, let's convert to a factor color, which is right now a character. If I go to str, I see now I've converted it to a factor. It has nine levels, black, blue, blah, 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 all those colors. All right. And now I can go up arrow, up arrow, get to my box plot of color, hit enter. Uh, notice no error message now. I go over here and I get this really cool looking side-by-side -side box plot all right and now I can start looking at these colors gold is just I wouldn't look into this too much because there was only one gold car all right um, and a lot of and some of these actually have very few observations so I uh, we're just learning how to use this tool side-by-side -side box plot but it, you would probably consider getting rid of this and so on but we see some interesting things we see yellow cars are very variable right and this being the median here is 
and the median being a measure of, of central tendency shows that that uh, the, the central tendency of yellow cars as far as price is much lower than the uh, other color types whereas silver tends to be um, arguably one of the highest right it's there's some cl close blacks not too far right but yellow and silver are quite dramatically different okay as far as price right so and there's and there's a lot more information loaded in here a lot more nuance but this is a tool you can use to compare colors of cars to the resulting prices okay so you can add color to this you can actually there's more options so I would always I would always implore you to use the help function type the name of the function hit enter if that doesn't work try uh, double dollar signs believe uh, sorry dollar sign plot okay there's other ways to call help or straight Google the name of a function okay so I hope this was helpful I wanted to give you some more things I I uh, left out in the previous videos and some new multivariate stuff all right so exploratory data analysis is much more sophisticated than just calculating the mean and the standard deviation all right till next time keep watching have a great day